How are Hi. you? I'm doing great. Thank you. It's lovely to meet you. And thank you so much for taking the time to have a chat today because I'm so excited about this role in particular to, to be able to learn more about it. Oh, nice. Well, I like your posters. There you go. Oh, you. <laughs> You're a fan. You're a fan I too. Am. That's I'm good. Trying to throw too many uh, hardball questions at you as, as a comic book fan. But, you know, this this is a great, great role. And I feel like I have to start by asking a question I don't really get to ask many actors. And that is, what is it like to stand opposite Superman on set? Oh, my God. Yes. Um, incredible. <laughs> Tyler is um Tyler's amazing. He's actually the best best partner. Um what's interesting about him is his work ethic, work ethic. He's insane. He was a football player or he was like he was an athlete. He was a high level athlete so he he brings that to the role. So when you're working with him, I mean, no one, you know, Tyler never gets tired. He never complains. He never I mean, he is Superman. <laughs> He acts like Superman. No, he's he's great. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. But of course, before we get to that confrontation between your character and Superman, you know, you have that really beautiful exchange with Clark Kent about obviously Payer's battle with cancer. And, you know, you talk about the pull, something I know you've talked about on social media as well. It's very important to you. So to shoot a scene like that, that is very hard hitting and I think quite intimate. What is that like for you as, as an actor and obviously being able to relate to, to what the character is going through as well? Um, yeah, it was, you know, the thing about this role was I had to just let go. I had to really let go of anything that was blocking me from wanting to go back into my own personal experience. You know what I mean? Yeah. That I think that was a key. And I was in Vancouver at the time and I was able to be alone. And that was the main thing I worked on, just making sure I was really open and vulnerable. Because, you know, you build up walls when you go through stuff like that. But when we were on set and we were shooting these things, they were very personal and they were very realistic. And the producers did a good job of authenticity. So it was weird when I would see things, they would trigger memories and I, I mean, all kinds of crazy stuff. And I had a, I had a couple of weird breakdowns where, you know, I was like, OK, um, this is a little intense, but I just think I had to let go and let it let it happen, you know, and just experience all the feelings. Yeah, well, it's, as I said, it's a lovely moment, particularly with obviously what Clark and Lois are going through. And this is a very complex character. And, you know, having played both sides of her, do you believe she is a villain or is she, she just someone trying to do the right thing, but maybe going about it in, in the wrong way, perhaps? Um, I love I love when we talk about the villain question, because I really do feel like that is complicated. And I and I've always said that I think the true villain of this season is cancer. Yeah, uh, that's the true villain. So I when I play her, I don't think of her as a villain. Um, she's trying to save her family. She's trying to save her life. And I can speak to this also. There's not a lot you won't do when you're trying to save your life. It's, it's just I'm not saying you should hurt people, but there's a desperation in it. And everything she's doing, even in the scene, I think the most pivotal scene is when she's at dinner. And that was tricky when we were at dinner with the family. And I'm so happy to meet, you know, the the, the potential love interest of Spence and who's playing, our, you know, Mateo's love interest. And then I have to turn because Mama Bear comes in and then I'm about protecting my family. So as an actor, I had to make a decision then. I was no longer sweet Pia. I'm turning into Anamanapia. Yeah. So, I, you know, I don't know. Is that a villain or are you just I like the audience to try to figure that out? <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's part of the fun. And, you know, you talk about obviously playing Pia and Onomatopoeia and, you know, that duality for you as a performer. What would you say has been the most rewarding and perhaps challenging aspect of having to explore two sides of this character? Because, again, when we see her, she's she is very different when she's not in that costume. Yeah, I think that's the thing that all actors, I don't know about all actors, I will say me is the thing that's the most exciting for me is to play a dichotomy. Um, I was really excited about trying to explore how do we find these two sides and make them honest? Because I didn't want to do something that was sort of one dimensional. And I was just really trying to figure out the humanity of her you know, like really the humanity, like how not just this sort of one dimensional super villain, like her as a woman, as a mother, as a protector, as a and also the whole idea of her angry about South Metropolis being ignored. Yeah. 
I thought a lot about that. You know, me and Chad talked about that a lot. Chad and I had great conversations on set. He's He was a good partner to bounce this stuff off of because he and I really got into the like nitty gritty of just the layers of it. And so a partner like that brings more out. So when I'm working opposite of him, you know, you're, you're as good as your partner. Now, and I, I owe a lot to him and Tyler and Bitsy, you know, they, they are good partners. They were all good partners in this. Yeah. And you're funny. You should mention Chad there because Chad L. Coleman, phenomenal actor. And, you know, for you, this obviously is a role where you're having to make yourself very vulnerable. So what was it like to have him by your side for a lot of your scenes and to be able to obviously play with that dynamic of, of husband and wife? Yeah, we were joking that we said we're each other's TV soulmates. <laughs> we said that we were like, we were two peas in a pod. We were singing musicals on set and dancing. And I mean, just we're two theater rats. That's really what it is. We both come from theater. We both are artists and love just the, the art of acting and theater. So we had a lot of fun kind of being geeks on set, like straight up acting geeks. And it was nice to just be able to let loose with someone like that. And he's very protective. He's very, he allows you to have your space. When we had to do the kind of intimate moments and the really emotional moments, he's very, um, he takes care of you. You know what I mean? He's an actor. There's some actors, honestly, who like are just, they don't care. They're, there's kind of a wall. Um, and it's harder to penetrate those ones, but he's not like that. He was open. So we just really just played. Oh, that's that's awesome. And of course, for you to come in as one of the main villains of a superhero series like this, obviously, it brings some pressure with it. You're having to deal with fans such as myself, maybe, you know, taking a closer look. How does it compare to the comics and things like that? But what do you think, obviously, having played on a Matapir now, makes her a worthy villain to test someone like Superman? I think perhaps the most iconic superhero on the planet. Yeah, I, I thought it was the coolest thing is that her power is so strong that it matches Superman. I thought, I got so excited when we got the script where we really discovered that. And I have to say that, I mean, this is no joke. Like I, the fans, I've never met such a bunch of nice people and humans. And this is the best fan mail I've ever gotten. I'm like, these, I feel like the, 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 the superhero fans, they know this world so well and they're so smart about it. So I was actually learning things. People were writing me and, I was learning a lot and I was kind of learning in real time. I was educating myself because I didn't know it. I mean, I didn't know as much. And so I really just dove in. I, and now I'm I'm kind of getting really into this world. I, I want to, you know, now I want more, but <laughs> wait till the next couple of episodes. There's some really cool stuff that she goes to, you know, kind of facing Superman and what she has to go through. And I don't think we've seen a character like this, at least not on DC. I don't think so. No, well, she is obviously a unique character and the show has reinvented her to some extent and a lot has had to change in that transition from page to screen. And I think for the better as well, actually. But when you then obviously have the comic books set, but they're not necessarily maybe as helpful because it's not a direct translation. How did you find right. obviously preparing for the role in that respect when you don't have, you know, hundreds of issues you can delve into and see exactly the character you're playing on screen? Right. Um, no, that's very true. I think for me, it was uh, visual. It was a very visual thing because that visual of onomatopoeia when you look when it was the man and just the dark shadowy figure with the mask. And then when I got to put on the costume, that informed a lot. Just the visual, the visual. I'm very visual. So when I put something on or put on a costume or look at something, it makes me feel a certain way. Yeah. So a lot of what I was portraying with the sound came from what she visually looked like and then my imagination and then the other part of it was the writers and the showrunners Todd and Greg and all of them they were um and Brent they were they gave me a big history because they're really into the mythology and they had I mean the writers and just Jay Jameson who who was the one who pitched on Amatopia he's one of our writers I could just sit with them and they would give me so much information and background and um that helped also so everybody's very knowledgeable on the set. So they helped. Yeah, I can imagine. And, you know, you mentioned the costume there. The mask is something a lot of fans have talked about. And I know you said that it's brought together with a mixture of obviously practical and visual effects. But when you are standing on set in that costume, do you start feeling a little bit taller and almost feel yourself undergoing a transformation as a performer that you go, you know, into supervillain mode, I guess? Oh, oh my God, 100%. The, first of all, the shoes. 
The shoes are, I don't know if everyone can see the, the boots. The boots she wears, the heels are like this. I mean, they're wow. massive, but they're constructed. Kat, our, our costume designer, is incredible. She's truly talented. Um, and the whole team, there's a whole superhero costume team, and they put, they constructed it. So as soon as it goes on and it's like a, a tight fit, I couldn't, you know, I had to be in, you know, I had to be in, I had to be working out. Um, it was, it was immediate, like immediate. You put it on and you just feel, you feel like a superhero. You feel like you have powers. And I would walk around, I'm silly, you know, I would walk around doing my, you know, trying to blast people. <laughs> trying to, I was like, I really wanted the thing to come out of my mouth. I'm like, ah, you know, and I'm, I was doing it and, you know, yeah, it, I had so much fun. Yeah, and I'm guessing it's obviously been a lot of fun for you now Now the show is airing to actually see the character fully realized, you know, her powers and that mask all brought to life with VFX. That must have been a fun side of things to see that as an audience member too. Yeah, uh, so the best part was, to, I don't know if you saw the episode in the alleyway when I'm when they're showing my neck and the yeah. veins and all that. Yeah. Okay, so when we were shooting that, um, you know, I, I, I did all of that physically. But the director said to me, Greg, he was like, listen, just go for it. And then the special effects guys, I was like, well, what, what, what do you guys want me to do? And they was like, he's like, no, just go for it. And we're going to add some stuff, play with it. So I had no idea what it was going to look like until I saw it last week. And when I saw it, I was like, what? It was crazy how they, I mean, it was scarier than I thought, honestly. Like it was, I know how I felt. Cause I gave every, I mean, I was tired after that night. I mean, I, I gave every ounce of energy I possibly could have inside of myself. As I feel like if you're going to fight Superman, my attitude that night literally was like, I'm fighting Superman. It better take, I mean, there better be nothing left inside of me. So I literally took that as a challenge physically. And then they added the special effects. So yeah, I think it was, it came out great. I was excited. Yeah, for sure. You know, you're talking about the action there, you know, when you are working on those action scenes, is that something you have a lot of fun with? I know obviously inevitably the stunt team are going to come in at some point to maybe take over, but you know, what's that like for you being getting into a very action packed role with obviously playing a super villain like this? Yeah, that, that, uh, that was one of the funnest things that was actually, I didn't know how much I'd like it. I, I now am, I told my people get me more stunt roles I, I loved the action stunt stuff I got into that I was like I, I used to be a dancer so I was a, prof a professional dancer so I think maybe that's why I got into it and then Rob the stunt coordinator he's incredible so he um and I just played with different body and again it goes to the theater geek in me like the body work and all of the you know I take all that stuff super seriously <laughs> You know, I'm like on there and I'm, and I told this in another interview, but there were rats, actual rats going through the set. Like, cause we were shooting this crazy alley and there were like real live rats. But the thing that it did to me, I had this whole idea of animals and I was like, oh my God, like she could be, she's destroy, you know, she's a destroyer. So the, the stunt stuff just goes along with that. Um, yeah, it was great. Oh, that's so cool. And, you know, I know you mentioned Elizabeth and obviously she's playing Lois Lane in the show and she's going through obviously her own cancer battle. So for the two of you getting to talk about that and work together, what was that experience like? And were you able to maybe give her some insights in, into what this journey is, is like for someone like and what Lois is obviously going through this year? Yeah, I thought it was a really special thing for we call her Bitsy, Elizabeth. Um, Bitsy's yeah. her nickname. We all call her. <laughs> and uh, I think it was a special experience for us because she had done a lot of homework, a lot of homework. She, that, you know, she was very prepared. She knew a lot. So kind of this, she asked me questions and we talked about stuff, but I was surprised at how much she knew already um, and how much she had delved into it. And I think it was just moving. You know what I mean? Two women, we had a lot, it was kind of a deep moment and for her and it brings up conversations about health and taking care of ourselves. And I just think it was a special time for me and her just to have those bits in the in the scene and especially the one where we're in the hospital and I move away from her that, those were real I, I mean we, it, there was some real moments there because I think she could sense that I was affected and then I could she was affected a lot of times people might not know but when actors have those things on set some people don't realize that they're real at least at least for me and her I don't know you know some people fake there's no faking it 
you know, it, yeah. it's not faking it. You're, you're kind you're really there. So I thought, I love having that with a fellow actor. She was, it brought us closer. Yeah. And, you know, it's not something we see in a lot of superhero projects. The Thor movie last year briefly touched on back characters, obviously cancer battle, but I think Superman and Lois has really delved into it in a very special way. And so to come into the DC universe, which is this huge iconic franchise, which is decades and decades, years old, was it meant for you to be able to bring a story like this into this world and, and be able to share that with people? Yeah, I, there were so many moments, Chad and I specifically would do a scene and I, don't, I haven't had this a lot in any of the roles I've done. And we would literally stop the scene and look at each other and go, can you believe this? This is crazy, right? Like, we're this is cool. This we There was a lot of times and, and that we were very well aware that this was something different and special. You could feel it. And also because I think when the crew members and everybody were watching some of the scenes, what was a trip was how I could see the people were affected watching, even in real time, our cast and our crew, because I don't think there's a person who's not affected by cancer. Everyone is touched in some way, like six degrees of separation by cancer. And so when we would do these scenes, I literally crew and the grips and the dollies and the people would come up and go, oh man, you guys. And so I knew that it was something then. Does that make sense? Like, Yeah. yeah. No, well, like I said, it's a fantastic role and a really exciting one. And as you said earlier, there are only a couple of episodes left this season now. So I know you probably can't say much, but is there anything you can tease about what we might see from Onomatope in the the next couple of weeks as we head towards, you know, the finale? Yeah, it's, uh, who, I, what can I tease? Just that it's, it's going to become incredibly intense. Um, there, I mean, the battles are not over. I'll say that the battle, the battle has just begun. <laughs> so we're like, if you thought the battle against Superman was something we're, we're, you're in store. So it's going to be, it's going to be exciting. I think I'm, I'm, I'm excited. So to see what, how it all comes together. Cause again, when we were shooting it, whoa, it was, it was intense. Awesome. Well, I I can't wait for that. But looking ahead to the future, obviously, we don't know if the show is coming back for another year. But what are some of maybe can you talk about any other projects you've got coming up? I know, obviously, you're a big advocate for obviously cancer awareness. But is there anything else you're working on you'd maybe like to to share with our readers? They can keep an eye out once once you finish playing this awesome supervillain. Yeah, I'm actually right in the middle of shooting a a show called Black Hamptons, which is basically the exact opposite. It's more of a fun (laughs) Um, hair, I, I'm dressed up and look all glamorous. So it's a glam show. I mean, it's like Dynasty set in the Hamptons. And I'm shooting that right now on the beach. Oh, what a contrast. <laughs> so I went from <laughs> Vancouver in the snow to, you know, the beach in Malibu and shoot. I'm, so I'm shooting that and that will come out in the, I believe in the fall. Um, and yeah, I'm just having a lot of fun, you know, just trying to soak up, soak it all up. I feel like uh, playing Superman and Lois was a pivotal pivotal career change experience if you could say it's been it's been it's been a good ride amazing and of course now you are part of this comic book world do you think we might see you at some conventions down the line because of course when when you become part of a a universe like dc fans want to meet you they want to get your photo your autograph is that something you're keen to maybe try out one day oh a hundred yes i'm literally in the middle of finding the um you know you get agents who then book these things like I'm, I'm finding out about the convention world and I'm, I totally want to do the conventions. I would, are you kidding me? Me? Oh yeah. I will get into a costume and prance around. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's right up my alley. I'm, I'm a hundred percent down with that. Yeah. I'm going to be doing it. Chad and I are supposed to be doing some together. So oh, amazing. if you go to my Instagram, Diavadia, um, at Diavadia, I'll be posting when those dates and when we, and so if you're in town, whoever's watching this should definitely come through. It's going to be we don't have a Bruno Mannheim and an onomatopoeia at a convention. I mean, yeah. And the both of us will be fun. We'll be signing and acting crazy. So. Oh, how cool. Oh, well, I, I'll be keeping an eye out for that, as I'm sure our readers were. And Diet, thank you so much for your time to talk about this role today. As I said, I, I think it's a really special superhero role, not, you know, not the norm. And it's it's something that's really, I think, reached out to a lot of people as well. So, so thank you for taking thank the time. You. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate that. It's lovely to meet you. Hope we get to speak again soon. Take care. Okay, take care. Bye.